7.13 right now. My flight is at 7.50. Cutting it close. It's only 12 minutes away, but like, I'm really, really hoping that there's no line for TSA. So, wish me luck. But I'll be in Seattle in like two and a half hours probably. I got this. <laughs> so nervous. As you can see here, I was very, very stressed about missing my flight. I'm normally really good at timing it and would not have had to rush this much, but this time was a bit different. I didn't leave work earlier to do last minute preparations for the trip. Then when I got to Seattle, it was about 10.30 p.m. and my friend was supposed to arrive around midnight. So I went to the Priority Pass Lounge to wait and had some food. It was all right. This trip has been a long time coming. My friend Kelly and I have not seen each other in about a year and we usually only meet up once a year for a couple hours when she's visiting and we would have dinner or something. But this time we wanted to spend more time together and decided to go on this trip super last minute because our schedules finally aligned after three years of planning a trip. We stayed at the Residence Inn in downtown and we did not expect it to be this big. If you're in Seattle, this seems like a really great hotel to stay at because it has a little kitchenette and a pretty decent sized living space. And there was also complimentary breakfast, so we definitely made use of that. Our first stop was Mr. West, which is one of my favorite coffee shops here in Seattle. I love, love the interior so much. They had their seasonal fall drinks, so I tried the maple salted toffee latte. And while we waited for our drinks, we were browsing through what they had to sell. They had candles and plants and some clothing, which were really great quality in my opinion. Wow. Is it sweet? Oh, crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we walked to Pike Place Market and walked around. Honestly, we spent a good amount of our time admiring all the flower arrangements they had because they were just so pretty and the prices were very good for what they were. This place is so much bigger than you think once you go inside and see all the shops downstairs. Then we walked to the gum wall, which is also at the market. This place is nice to see once when it's your first time visiting Seattle, but it was not my first time. And also, we just felt really icky being here after a while, so we just left after taking a few pictures. Then we walked around the city, basically making our way to the Space Needle, but on our way there, we stopped by the Amazon Spheres. It's just we couldn't get in because we needed someone who actually worked there to visit. At the time, our friend wasn't there with us, so we just walked around the area and they were giving out free bananas, so Kelly got one, of course. And now that I think about it, I think she somehow got a free banana every single day of this trip, all from different places. <laughs> When we got to the Space Needle, to be honest, it was a really hot day for Seattle, so we went into the gift shop to cool down and looked at a few things. And I cannot even tell you how long we spent picking out the most perfect mugs. I ended up with two mugs that I really did not need because I already have way too many mugs at home, but the art on the mugs were just so nice I couldn't pass them up. Then we walked around just a little bit enjoying the fall foliage and it was honestly so peaceful looking at them. I actually could not stop talking about trees on this trip because that's one of the things I really love about Seattle and kind of why I want to move there. After walking for a good four hours, we were very exhausted so we took a lift back to the hotel and then decided to just hang out for a bit and to order in which was such an amazing idea after a long day. We caught up for hours that day sharing what's happened in our lives the past few years more in detail because we had not talked like this since right before COVID started pretty much. And then after dinner, we went to Nana's Green Tea since we were craving something sweet and here they specialize in green tea for their desserts and if I remember correctly, they also served some Japanese dishes like katsu curry I think. We hung out here some more before we walked back to the hotel which was literally right across the street so it was such a good location and then we talked until we fell asleep and then got some rest for the next day. We basically started the next day the same as the first. We got the complimentary breakfast downstairs and then grabbed some coffee at a different coffee shop called Anchorhead Coffee. And I think we both actually liked it a bit more than Mr. West, which is funny because the only reason why I never tried it is that I really liked Mr. West, so I didn't even bother crossing the street for it whenever I visited Seattle. Then we started packing because the next few nights of our trip, we'd be spending at our friend's place. 
We went to Jack's Fish Spot as our first stop with them and I wanted to go back to this place because I think they serve some really good fried fish sandwiches so that's what we got. Then we walked around Pike Place again but this time we got some apple cider which you can sample before you decide on one which is great because um, I'm very indecisive. Then we went back to the place to rest a little bit before going to University Village and we hung out with our two cats, Lilo and Yuki, who are so adorable. When we got to University Village, we got some ice cream from Molly Moons, which is a really popular ice cream shop that had some really unique flavors and a really long line outside. <laughs> Our next stop was University of Washington, which is such a beautiful campus, especially walking around and feeling the fresh air around you. We definitely got lots of steps in within the campus alone. And for dinner, we picked up some Korean fried chicken from Chimac and brought it home so we could hang out comfortably in our PJs and then just play some board games together. On our third day here, we went to Bellevue to eat Brazilian barbecue. And if you're not familiar with Fogo, they have an all you can eat option for Brazilian barbecue where they'll go to your table to serve you some meat. Nearby was a boba shop with a Michelin star, so we wanted to try that as well. There was a long line obviously and the store was packed, but it went by pretty quick I would say. And you can tell that they serve some really high quality tea. It was really expensive though, so personally I don't think I would go back again. Thank you. Dong ding, <laughs> milk tea with oat milk and boba, and it was nine dollars. Most expensive, yeah, boba ever ever. It's pretty good though. I don't think I get this every day. You wouldn't get it every day. Yeah, I got a hot because it's really cold. I got a I got a hot because it's really, got a hot. <laughs> I got a hot tea because it's really cold. We're lost. <laughs> Then Kelly and I took the ferry to Bainbridge Island to visit my brother. I think it was about a 30 minute ferry ride and it was just really relaxing looking at the view on the water while we chatted. I actually had no clue that pickleball started in Bainbridge so that was a fun fact for me. And while we were waiting for my brother to pick us up, we walked around the little town that they had. They had really nice oh. boutiques there, but their bookstores were probably our favorite. We didn't get to explore this one huge bookstore they had though because we had to leave, but I would definitely come back here again to explore a little more. Then my brother picked us up and drove us to Polsbo because I've never actually been to their downtown area. Polsbo is known to be the Little Norway of Washington, and it really is little. We went into a popular bakery and got a Viking cup, which is pretty much a cinnamon roll, but we got one because that's what they're known for. Then we had dinner at a pub that my brother usually goes to and got some nachos, and then also listened to some live jazz music, which was really nice. We basically ended the night with that and went back on the ferry. And even though it was so cold out, we went outside and enjoyed the lights from the city. I honestly love Seattle so much, I cannot get enough of it. On our fourth and final day, we walked to REI from our friend's place and I was so amazed by how big it is. It's their flagship store, so it was huge. I believe there were small trails here for customers to test their bikes on and I just thought that was really cool and very unique. They even had a tiny waterfall and stream so it made us feel like we were hiking to see a nice view which we did want to do on this trip but didn't have time for so it was perfect to see this on our last day. 
We were looking to buy sweatshirts as souvenirs, but they didn't have anything that was subtle enough and fit our style. So we just walked to Anchorhead again to pick up some drinks before visiting Google and touring the office. It was our first time eating lunch at a Google office and honestly, it was surprisingly really good. And I say that because I just don't usually expect cafeteria food to be so impressive, but it was decent food. And as we ate lunch, we also enjoyed the view of Lake Union from the office. So that was a nice bonus. Then we got some free drinks at the cafe, which would probably be my favorite thing here if I was an employee. We also picked up some snacks and played some ping pong until the fire alarm went off and we had to evacuate the building. This tour has definitely given me more motivation to work harder for a position at Google. It is really hard work, but I do believe that it is possible if I put in the effort. And really anyone. This Seattle trip is for sure one for the books. I really enjoyed the quality time I had with friends and nothing was ever stressful. We just went with the flow, which is exactly what we wanted for this trip. I hope you enjoyed the Seattle vlog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs>